rented houses, students, you've always got everything. You have the blanket and the CO2. Well, you might have done, <laughs> didn't in our day. Do you know why you don't extinguish a chip, an oil fire with water? Because the oil would float on the water and the fire would spread around. That's why you use foam to put out big fires from aeroplane crash landings and petrol stations going up at the end of films and things, because uh, you have to use something lighter than the fuel so that it removes the oxygen. Is that right? Yep. You see, we don't just read this off a script. We actually know what we're talking about. Have you seen it, actually, a water and oil? I've tried a water and oil fire. Yeah, I tried it with a bit of petrol ones. Lit it and then sprayed it with a hose pipe to see what happened, and it just moved off down the drive. Mm -hmm. Stupid thing to do. Don't do that at home. Or at least point it away from the garage door, not into it, because that's really stupid. How do you think they di get different coloured fireworks, then? Different coloured fireworks? Oh, well, that's a result of different chemical compounds burning with particular colours. Uh, and I used to know some of these because I once made some fireworks, and I'm really ashamed to say I've pretty much forgotten them. Magnesium is white, obviously, we all know that from chemistry. Green, what, what made the green balls? Copper sulfate. It was copper sulfate, wasn't it? Yeah, which you put in powdered form into little pellets, and then the red ones were... Iron, isn't it? It, it must have been... Iron, ferrous sulfate. Something like that, yeah, made red balls. Yeah, anyway, ferrous sulfate. Yeah, various, various different chemical compounds produce different colours when burned, and then you form those into pellets or into powders that burst out. And fireworks technology is fascinating. The only thing that's interesting, or maybe interesting is the wrong word, inevitable about fireworks making is that every fireworks factory in the world eventually blows up. They always do. So you can make fireworks home, you have to get a license, but you can do it, you can do it in your garage, but you will blow your house up. Maybe not next week, maybe not in the next 10 years, but eventually you will. I've, I've made some fireworks, yes, on uh, Man Lab, another program I made. We made a rocket. The annoying thing is the rocket itself didn't work properly, but the bits in the nose cone that came out to make the red and yellow balls and go bang, they worked a treat. Unfortunately, because the rocket didn't work very well, they all came out and made red and yellow balls and went bang right in someone's back garden. But, but it was quite successful apart from that. When I was a boy, and I'm talking about the age of 10 or 11, a box of matches was two pence. Um, and there was nothing more exciting that you could spend two pence on, really, than a box of matches and set things on fire, including your mates. It was brilliant fun. I suppose that sort of thing is very frowned upon these days. And, of course, back then, I don't want to sound like an old man, but we had a lot of, well, not safety matches. So what do you call those? Danger matches? I don't know, the red-tipped ones that you would strike on anything. So you could put them on the bottoms of your shoes and then ride your bicycle along, put your feet on the ground and have flames leap out of the side of your soles. Stuff like that. It was just fantastic fun. Hours and hours and hours of harmless fun. I mean, a few people burned to death, but, you know, we just thought that was normal back then. Jonesy bought it today. He got set on fire whilst we were strapping matches to the back wheel of his bicycle. But you accepted a certain number of casualties back in the early 70s. The other thing that was good fun with, with the old red-headed danger matches, and I don't know very many people who know this, I was shown this actually by my grandfather, so it must be an ancient trick, but you get the match and you pull off a little bit of tin foil and you wrap it very tightly around the red end of the match and then screw the end into a point. And then if you rest that horizontally, usually on the side of the matchbox itself, and hold another match under it or put a little meths burner from your chemistry set under the red-tipped wrapped in the silver fall, eventually it reaches a temperature where the red tip effectively explodes and the pressure bursts out of the tin foil and the match flies like a rocket across the room. And if you spend half your teenage years making hundreds of these, two of you can be at opposite sides of a room, line them all up and just have a battle firing matchstick rockets at each other until one of you gets hit in the eyeball. Brilliant. Did you do that? It's great fun, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Life was simple in the old days. We didn't have the iPad, we just had matches. But most of us are still alive. Great. Very close to the root of civilization, in fact. Yes, it is. I mean, that is man's red fire, and we had it in our pockets, bought with our pocket money. And I suppose some people did get hurt, but if you wanted to be really pedantic and anal about it, you could probably work out how many people have been knocked over by motor vehicles crossing the road trying to text. So the world hasn't really got any safer. The danger areas just moved around a bit. We used to fall off bicycles. These days, young people die of obesity because they play Call of Duty too much. So what?